Hello and welcome to or back to Derby City RC. In this video, we are going to compare several different cars that are under $150. We're going to have bashers, speed cars, might even throw a crawler in there. I will also include a clickable link up here in the corner of the screen for the most prominent video of the car I am talking about at that moment. Not only that, I will have links in the description of this video to every one of these cars that I'm about to talk about. Plus, I'll also share any upgrades that I maybe really recommend for any of these specific cars. If you are new to this channel and you like this video, we would love it if you hit the subscribe button. We try to make all of our videos as entertaining and informative as we possibly can, and hitting that like button helps us a whole lot too. Now I'm gonna start with this one. This is WL Toys. I know everyone talks about these things, but there is a good reason for that. These things are rather well known in the community of RC enthusiasms, and that's because they have really good performance to price ratio value or something. Really good price for the performance that they spit out. They do have drawbacks and we're gonna go over those. There's one right there. But really the performance on these is incredible. This one in particular is brushless and wow is it insane. It also can take 3S battery power which is supposed to get it over 70 miles an hour. Honestly the one time I've tried that which will probably be coming out in a video soon, the parking lot was too small. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> like it's really fast. On 2S, it is much more manageable, but it's still insanely fast. I know I've said that a lot, but seriously, these things are really fast and again, under $150. A lot of these cars, this one included, have other options. Or they might come with a third battery and that might shoot the price up a little bit. But the models that I'm gonna link in the description will all be under $150. Though I cheat a little bit at the end. There is also an older version that comes with a brushed motor and that thing was fast too. The smaller batteries, cause you can also get these with longer, larger batteries because they will fit in this tray because you can move this wall. The smaller batteries last like five minutes in that thing. In this one, they really don't last much longer than that either. But get the longer battery, that'll help with that issue. Another issue with this one is that there is a slight delay from when you pull the trigger on the controller to when it actually starts to go. It's just kind of annoying. Because of its excessive power and speed and the fact that it's obviously a racing style vehicle and it sits low to the ground and has a low center of gravity, it's really fun to take fast speed turns and just have it glide across the parking lot. It's a very fun car, but its biggest drawback, besides the few that I mentioned, is that it's not the most durable. Its plastics are hard, they don't flex very much, and so when they don't flex, instead of flexing, they crack and break. Definitely a fun buggy racer vehicle. I have another racing buggy that I will show you in just a minute that is very different from that one. But first, I'm gonna show you this one. <laughs> This little guy here is probably the cheapest one that I have on my list today. But the good thing about this is it's really good for kids, but I even still grab this one sometimes. It has two motors for it, one for the front and one for the rear, so it doesn't use an actual drive shaft. Each axle has its own motor. Now, they are small motors, but it's also a small car. It's a 14th scale, which is the same size as our trusted WL toys we just talked about. This is actually the car that I give my three-year-old, who actually has no idea yet how to even steer, <laughs> and he's used it several times now, and it has yet to break. And I've also had my go at it a few times and I'm not easy on stuff at all. The only thing that did happen, though it's not really a breakage, was we lost one of the rear suspension springs. Luckily I had another car that had one that fit. For its size and especially for the price compared to other vehicles, this one had a really good top speed. It's not much, but it's two or three miles per hour faster than most other cheap 14 scale cars. Many of which cost 30 or $40 more than this one. And again, hasn't broken, been abused, very fun to drive. And it has much better battery life than this, but it's not hard to beat the battery life of that car. By the way, these cars are in no particular order, but I am gonna save my favorite for last. Next, we have the absolutely beloved HBX 16 A89A Pro. Anyone who's ever had one of these cars absolutely loves them. Probably. Very easily one of the most durable RCs you can 
get. Now it does not come with these tires. It comes with tires that are actually probably a little bit smaller than these. You can see that that is quite a big difference, but this truck works really well with these tires on it. I will also link those in the description. They give it smoother landings if you tend to jump. They also allow this truck to be able to do backflips and even double backflips, which is rather difficult with the stock tires. Plus, I honestly think they look really awesome. This pro version comes with oil filled shocks, metal axles, metal drive cups, and metal differential gears. Absolutely amazing vehicle out of the box with or without the tire upgrades. Absolutely cannot go wrong with that. Next up, I'm going to show you my one and only crawler. It's also the smallest vehicle that I have. Using a crawler is almost more about strategy, like how you're going to get over certain obstacles. It has upgraded tires on it. These beat the original tires by a lot, but it's very capable. It's a whole lot of fun. I highly recommend it. Check that out up here if you're interested. Next is going to be the other racing buggy I was talking about. This thing is not as fast but it is much more durable. I believe we got this one to top out the 21 and some change miles per hour. However, even though we do have some front shock issues, this buggy is much more durable. It is actually based off of this truck, which if you remember is easily one of the most durable RCs that you can buy. It also had really good handling, great control on the ground. So if you're looking for that racing buggy, but don't want it to break every time you hit a little curb, that's not the one you want. You want to get this one. And if you want more than 21 miles an hour, there are a lot of upgraded motors that you can put in this thing to make it go a whole lot faster. But I have yet to do that to mine, so I don't know which motor to recommend just yet. It has the oil-filled shocks, the metal axles, the metal differential gears, all that good stuff. The only the only place this one is lacking is top speed. Something I also should have mentioned about this one and the WL Toys is the fact that they have their clips going in from the side. The reason that's wonderful and awesome is if you have a front end collision, whether it be horizontally or vertically, those clips aren't going to pop out. Next up, we've got this old girl. Um, this is a Rolarlo, and it's got some interesting stuff going on. First off, it is a brushed motor. I will show you. Brushed motor, but it's a big one. It's a 550 size. Very good performance. It's fast. It has great acceleration. Now, if you remember, the thing about those cars is that they're not the most durable. This one is modeled after that car. It's got the same chassis. It's even got the aluminum chassis that I think I forgot to mention this has. So this one has a slightly higher center of gravity because it has a taller suspension system, which makes it better for bashing. Still has that aluminum chassis, except they blacked it out, which looks epic. Still has that great performance of sliding instead of flipping over. That coupled along with the bigger tires and the grippierness of the treads make this a very fun car to have. Now talking about the durability, haven't seen it in riding but I do believe that these plastic components have a different plastic compound than they use in that car over there. Again, I haven't verified that. I haven't seen anyone else say it, but they feel more flexible and they have a different texture. Another sign is the fact that this one has the part number etched into the plastic while this one does not. Something's different between those two, and this one feels better. They do claim that this can take a 3S battery, and I did that. Here's the video on it. This thing will get extra hot and it will fry itself if you are not careful. Don't run more than one battery at a time without letting it cool off in between packs. I'm actually gonna put a link to their website so that you can look at their entire inventory. Fun vehicle that was worth making it to this list. Here we have a larger scale RC. They claim this is 10th, but it's actually a 12th scale. There are lots of different options with this same chassis. This one here is the Stadium truck style. They also have this Truggy version, which is under a different brand. Then they have the Piranha, the Desert Journey, the Tachyon, this one, this one. 
Now all the cars in that pile share the same chassis. Some of the cars on this chassis you can get brushless, but those are above our $150 budget. However, there is one I wanna give an honorable mention because it's usually on sale just a little bit above. It is brushless, it is not a whole lot faster than this one, but it does seem to have better battery life and it doesn't have the heat issues that you get with a brushed motor. These two here are heavily modified. I really like this body shell. I've got a hobby wing brushless motor set up in there. It's extremely fast and the car withstands it pretty well, but it still ends up getting damaged quite a bit. As you can see this axle that is bent just slightly. These oversized tires don't help at all with that. These are very solid and strong cars. You can do a lot with them as you can see. They even sell a version of it that's got like a Jeep SUV body on it. So this one, and the Holly 10 are well under the budget. I also have videos on both of these cars showing the upgrades that I did and the extreme abuse that I have put them both through. We're starting to run out of room, but onward we march to the Hypergo. This truck is amazing. We just did our review on it as our last video before this one. And I was very impressed. Its biggest issue is the fact that it bounces too much when it lands. That was only like two feet up. So imagine like 10 feet from the air, it just bounces too much. In that review, I talked about the fact that I'm probably gonna try these tires on here because this one bounces so much less. Probably in part due to the fact that it won't bottom out as easily as this one will. Because of the bigger tires. Starting off, it's got a clipless body very easy to remove and it never popped off on me during the whole battery pack that we used it for. That's an awesome sign and it did crash a whole bunch. It is brushless unlike the version one Hypergo which was brushed. We had zero breakage on anything on the entire truck. It's got a fan over that brushless motor. It's got really grippy nice tires and the thing wheelies like crazy and that's just on 2S and it is 3S capable. I'm gonna have a 3S video on it here soon, but even its 2S battery performance was amazing. And if you don't know the S part of a LiPo battery, it's basically telling you how many cells it has, which corresponds with the amount of volts that it sends to the motor. Even the brakes on this car were fun to play around with. Really, really enjoyed this truck. And of course, it fell under our budget. Another HBX, the 901A. Currently, it has a broken axle stub. But that's okay. This truck didn't make it to the list because of its good looks and its durability. It made it because of its performance, straight out of the box. It's another brushless, fast off the line, fun to handle car. This thing has a whole lot of power for its size and the fact that it's really pretty lightweight. And because these tires aren't very grippy, you don't lose control with it doing wheelies. It actually will just spin out all four tires. Its main problem probably is the fact that it doesn't have a center differential. Now, so far, none of these cars have center differentials, but this one really should have had one because it has the longer wheelbase. It's a 12th scale. And the fact that it doesn't have a center diff is the reason that it breaks these stub axles. They're really easy and cheap to replace, but still, you don't wanna have to do that if you don't have to. I will add that it does take quite a bit of abuse before this car starts to break. It's a pretty solid machine. A good tire upgrade for this car are the same tires that I've got on this six. 16th scale. It gave it a whole lot more air control, allowed it to do flips and tricks. Video here. Overall, very fun truck. I don't know. There's just something about it. It was worth going on this list. It uses the same shocks that the 16th scale car uses. This is a bigger car. It should not have the same size shocks as a much smaller car. This one also gets a little tricky on price because it's regular price last time I checked, is just slightly over 150 at 154, but it is almost always on sale for a little bit less. Plus a lot of times they have coupon codes on this one. So if there is a coupon code for this or any of these cars, I will list it next to that car down in the description. Well, that's it, bye. Nope, that's not it. We have one more. And this is my favorite. And that is the Fly Hall FC 610. Now this super sexy beastly beefcake does not come like this, unfortunately. This is due to quite a few upgrades, video here, but in its stock form, 
it is very fun to drive. It's more fun like this, but it's still great in its stock form. Now, part of the reason it's my favorite is because of the upgrades I've put on it, but I can't stress enough how much I recommend this truck. Now, HBX has a version of it as well with this body on it. It doesn't fit because of where I have that ESC, but you can imagine it's also pretty awesome. Yeah. Now I do like this body style a little bit better. Plus the spare tire almost acts as a wheelie bar, but that one is slightly more money, even though it does come up under our budget. I'm gonna focus on the FC610 because it is cheaper. It's almost always on sale, but if it's not, it's still worth it. It comes with these tires out of the box. The HBX version actually comes with these same wheels here, which like I said, I don't really like them. You can still keep the truck completely stock except for buy these tires and by the wheel spacers that you need to get to install those tires and still stay under budget if this is on sale at the time. It's got a center differential, which like I mentioned, this car really lacks that. Center differentials are pretty rare in budget RCs. So the fact that this has it is awesome. None of these other ones do. Not only does that center differential increase durability because it acts as a buffer under load or during distress, it also makes it much better at handling because that amazing component in there can allow each individual wheel to either not spin at all or spin at different speeds to help it stay planted. It's a completely different feeling. Now, speed-wise in the stock form, I think it was around 17 miles an hour. Nothing to throw your hat up and rejoice over, but it's still faster than most brushed budget RC. Budget? Budget RCs. And then as you grow out of that speed, you can do these upgrades. I outlined how to do it in that video that I've posted up here a few times. Oh. There it is again. You can find more information on all of these in the listings that I list in the description. They'll have the specifications listed on Amazon and Banggood and anywhere else I've got these listed on. I have a whole lot of information in all those individual videos that I shared that you can watch. In fact, if you can believe it, this video right here that you're watching is our 118th video. Wow, how overwhelming. Every video we've done, probably anyway, is full of information. I hope this helped. Please subscribe if you haven't yet, if you found this enjoyable or informative or both. Like this video, comment if you have any questions or if there was a car that you wish you would have seen here. Keep in mind that this is only cars that I have. I'm not making some generic video that other people have already done. This is my personal experience with all of these. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys really soon.